No? Hmm, how about camembert? Not cheesy enough for you. Okay, how about some cheddar then? Some nice strong cheddar. Still not good enough? Okay, we're going with the big guns. We're going Stilton. You like extra cheesy? Then let's talk about Occupation. This is an Australian science fiction movie, and as you can tell by my intro, I have some strong opinions about this movie. But let's get you a brief kind of like synopsis about what it's about. And this can be summed up very easily. Have you seen the movie Red Dawn? Have you seen the movie Independence Day? Squish those two things up and pop out comes occupation. It is essentially a retelling of the movie Red Dawn where we have a, in this case, a small Australian town which is besieged by aliens. Uh, and we were assuming obviously they're, assuming they're going over the whole world. And it's up to this kind of like this group of strangers and kind of locals and you know people who are visiting who kind of get uh, kind of pushed off to the side and end up escaping and going in the woods and they sort of make this kind of like small band of resistance fighters uh, that end up coming having a, a variety of kind of different uh, attacks and assaults on this kind of like the aliens and become kind of quite legendary and end up their kind of numbers grow etc and then up until the kind of the final assault. Here. So it's very much like Red Dawn. I mean, if you've seen that movie, it's pretty much a remake, but it reminded me of elements of, I would say more V in a way than in an Independence Day, but maybe people don't know what that is. Um, but the end of the movie really reminds me of Independence Day. So it's kind of a mix between Red Dawn, V and Independence Day. So there you go. However, there are some good things here. And I'm going to say this because I was absolutely so blown away with the production value of this movie. When this film started, and we have the, the kind of these the aliens kind of arrive there. Uh, they arrive at I think it's a, like a, a rugby game or something, and um, they are to start attacking the kind of the people. It looks fantastic. It really does look like fairly high production value. Maybe not Hollywood's sort of, you know Independence Day style that kind of stuff. But it, I was really impressed. There's loads of extras. There's loads of kind of like pyrotechnics and explosions kind of going off. It's really exciting. And I've got to say, uh, the visual effects in regards to the actual, when the aliens, when we first see the kind of these spaceships that have come down, look really good. And I was, I was so impressed here with um, uh, the, the kind of the look of the film. It feels like it's actually a fun, you know, a quite reasonably budgeted movie. And it's kind of like got these sort of high production values, the kind of the technical stuff and the camera work. The cinematography all looks good. The sound design is good here. Um, and you've actually got uh, a few kind of actors that you'll recognise here. Uh, probably the most familiar one I would say is um, uh, Tamula Morrison, who is, is he was Django Fett. Uh, but you've also got you know a couple of people from Australian soaps who I'm ultimately not familiar with. But there's a guy here from Turbo Kid. Um, someone else, uh, Bruce Spence is here. He's one of the aliens though, so you won't recognise him. Um, so that was all sort of quite good. So, uh, as far in regards to spectacle, this is a science fiction movie that you can get behind because it does have the spectacle. And I've got to say, when we kind of see our alien troops, they are kind of like, hmm, they're the same kind of biped sort of size humans as we are. But their armor looks cool, they've got this kind of powered armor. That all looks cool. There's loads of guns and gun battles, and the gun battles are particularly well staged. There's lots of hardware on display here. All looks good. Okay. So why say that thing at the beginning? Why do I say cheesy, mega cheesy? Let's talk dialogue. Ooh, eee. The dialogue here is cringe-worthy. I mean, it really is. Unfortunately, despite the fact that this movie looks very good, when people are speaking and the words that are coming out their mouth, it's, oh my God, it seems like a 13-year-old has written this in 1990. And this is kind of like the script that they've gone with in regards to the dialogue. It sounds terrible. It's so kind of trite, cheesy, kind of like macho dialogue. And then we get to the ending. 
I have never seen a more cheesy ending of a movie. I won't tell you what it is. Oh, but I wanted to just like, pull my face off with cringe. I mean, my God, this movie is, it is, needs to be seen to be believed in regards to this ultra, ultra cheesy ending. Ooh, why they thought this was a good idea? I mean, maybe they, oh yeah, let's, let's kind of like, message of positivity and all of that, but oh God. It's way over the top, way over the top. So that's, that's big points down because the dialogue here is so horrible, but that's not the only issue I would say. Now, if you've seen Red Dawn, it's essentially about this lot, fairly large group of kids, 10 or so people, and the same here. But I never really feel like I got to know anyone in this movie. Um, a couple of people maybe stand out a little bit. Uh, Tamula Morrison's character as this kind of angry dad stands out to me because he's a he's a good actor ultimately but he kind of plays the same thing to be fair but um there are a couple of sort of uh uh you know somewhat memorable characters but they're all fairly bland i think part of the problem here is that there's not that there's 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 just you just don't get to know anyone and for example there's a there's a scene kind of towards the end where a couple of the characters die and thinking jesus i even forgot they even existed because just like I'm just not invested in, in the characters here, so I felt more needed to be done to um, to kind of really get you invested in these in the characters, or have less characters to begin with, and then maybe concentrate on no more than kind of three characters here, um, because it, they, you just don't really kind of feel you're that invested in anyone particularly. They even introduced a whole bunch of new characters in the last kind of like a third of this movie, these kind of military types. So it's like. Man, there's even more people I've got to recognise, kind of got to remember here. Now, I've mentioned the special effects. I did like the special effects with one exception, and that is the actual aliens themselves. When we see them without the, uh, uh, the kind of like the armour on, they look a little bit silly. Um, the special effects, I would say, are very good quality, and you wouldn't be, you, you know, if you were to watch this in the cinema, um, you would be thinking it was cinema worthy with the exception of the actual aliens outside of the armour because they look a little bit silly. They're obviously based off the kind of classic grey aliens, but they just look like people in, in masks, unfortunately. Um, so they really don't look particularly good. They kind of look like rubbery masks, which is a shame because when we look at the, the, the armour that they're wearing and stuff like that, it all looks pretty good. Um, but the masks, unfortunately... I mean, maybe this not see them would have been a better idea, or, 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 or I don't know, but yeah. I just don't think the masks looked, looked particularly good here. Um, however, I mean, despite all of my critiques, this still is a fun film. And the fact that, they, that it's, it's so well produced in other areas, I still feel you would get something from this film to watch. So I, I would recommend watching this film if you're a kind of a science fiction fan. But just don't expect originality because it is just a kind of carbon copy of uh, Red Dawn. And if kind of like Trike's dialogue would bother you, then, well, that, then in that case, and this is going to, this still needs to be seen to be believed. Um, uh, Luke uh, Sparkle, who actually directed this, co wrote this, and there apparently there was uh, a Felix Williamson who did uh, additional dialogue here. So I don't know whose fault this is with it, who, in regards to the kind of like the, the writing and the dialogue of people. Uh, you know, uh, this um, Felix Williams, if he's brought on to kind of like punch at the dialogue, it, it must have been worse than this to begin with, or it's his fault. So it's difficult to kind of say who's the, uh, who's the critter, the person here responsible for such crap dialogue. Now there is actually a sequel of this being made, and I'd say it's worth it because this movie does have... Um, you know, it's somewhat of a cinematic quality, and it's kind of like, it's an enjoyable film. It kind of feels like it, I mean, it may, it may have been better served as a TV show. It reminded remind me maybe of that Falling Skies, uh, because there's so many characters in that, but the more of a long form way, you can kind of get a bit more from it, but it's a film, there's just too many to begin with. But anyway, I'll give this movie a 6 out of 10. I would say it's worth it um, to just to check out as a kind of action film, but just bear those critiques in mind. Have you seen it? Let me know what you thought. Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.